Hi, warriors. This is Jalen Megahead, my legal warrior. And today we're going to talk about spousal support and how the coronavirus is probably affecting your spouse support orders right now. So if you have been affected by the coronavirus, then this video applies to you. If you've been affected by the coronavirus in, which, in a way that it affects your employment, your earnings, then this also applies to you. Now, if you've never or haven't been employed um, and your spouse support orders are based off of retirement income, for example, this video does not apply to you because you're still receiving your retirement income. So in order for this video to apply to you, you would need to have a current spousal support order. And then you would also need to have basically no job or your hours have been cut and so you're being paid uh, significantly less. And therefore you need some sort of relief from the spouse support orders that are in place today. So what does that look like? So before we get into the solutions, there are various solutions as to how we can deal with this. Um, but for the purposes of this video, I'm actually only going to go through one solution because the solution is something that I just you know, crafted. I, it's not supported by law, it's not supported by case law or anything like that, but I think it would help you as the person that's paying the spouse support to kind of have something in your back pocket and a plan and an action plan to, as you're moving forward in these next few months of uncertainty so that you can have some sort of communication with the other party and like a peace of mind as well because the other party might be like, I want my $1,000 a month in spousal support and I don't care if you lost your job and I need it and, and you can have these sort of arguments and you can make money out of thin air, right? So we've, we've already, we all know that. <laughs> and hopefully your, your ex-spouse also, you know, knows that too. Um, but if he or she doesn't, you can't do anything. And the unfortunate thing about today is that <laughs> you, you would typically be able to go to court and ask the court to give you some sort of relief from your child support order. But as be it be as it may, um, there that, that's not the you don't have that sort of relief. So the courts are shut down until April 3rd. So maybe the courts will be open on April 6th. Your legal warrior doesn't believe that it will be. I think it will continue to be shut down. Um, but if it is open, awesome. Make sure that you go ahead and immediately file to modify spousal support. And the reason why it's important that you modify spouse support is without that modification, your, child, your spousal support obligation is going to continue month after month after month. That's the only way that you can get relief is by a way of court order to modify the existing amount. Now the other party might say, oh well, yeah, I'll go ahead and accept this much and we don't need to go to court about it, and there's nothing in writing between the two of you about how he or she will accept less support and will not even ask for the difference in that support at a later time. Um, when you, you don't have that confirmation or something in writing, um, and it's not going to later become a court order, then that's a problem. So this video is focused on providing you at least one solution to navigate through this process, this process of uncertainty through the legal system, because there's, as of today, there is no law that I'm aware of, and today is March 23rd, 2020. There's no law that I'm aware of where the court is going to allow you to file once it's open to ask for relief effective today's date. So we're really concerned about that back pay of spousal support. And that's really what this is supposed to help you. You get some relief from that. And then also the other party gets something uh, from you. And this is assuming, of course, that you're, some sort of money is going into your pocket. 
um, and you're not just at zero. If you're at zero, then you're going to be paying zero, and, and that's just the reality of it. And the other party, if they don't understand it, they could take you to court when the court's open. I mean, boy, what are they going to do? Or what else can they do when you can't even do anything about it? So I would just tune that out um, because it's unreasonable to have somebody expect you to pay something when you don't even have the finances to make those payments. So let's say that your child or spousal support obligation is $500 a month. So if your spouse support obligation is $500 a month, then the court probably made that amount based off of your marital standard of living, obviously your ability to pay from your income as well as the other party, whether they're self-supporting or not, what was the status quo during your marriage, whether more education and job skills and things like that were needed in order for the other party to become self-supporting and to potentially earn beyond minimum wage and the whole slew of factors that we can go over. But, for our purposes in this very simple video is we're going to just pay the other party based off of the percentage in which we're paying for my net disposable income. So what does that actually look like? All right, so here we go. We are going to just write a text here, but today is March 23, 2020. Okay, so your spousal support order, $500, and the court made that order based off of your net disposable income, all right? So let's say your net is 2,500, all right? So spouse support is $500 and your net disposable income is $500, then, how much is 500 from $2,500? I mean, what, what is that percentage, right? Like that's what we're trying to get after. So to calculate that percentage, we're gonna take the spouse support order, divide it by disposable income, and that is going to equal the percentage, which I should just equal here. All right, so if that's the case, then it's $500. You're gonna divide that by the 2,500, and that is going to equal 0.2 or 20%. So moving forward, you just pay 20% of whatever it is that you receive from God knows who up to $500 because your obligation is only $500, all right? Until you can actually make it in court and ask the court to provide some relief given the significant changes of circumstances, which is you not having a job or your job has been cut and this is all that you could pay. So if you received $100 as a gift from somebody, pay 20% of it to the other, the other parent. Okay, or the other party. If you received, you know, five thousand dollars from somebody, okay, well, that's different. You don't pay twenty percent of five thousand dollars. You're just going to pay the five hundred dollars. So the the solution has several purposes. One, we want to look like you're paying, making good faith payments to the other party given the circumstance. And this is just something that we believe is reasonable in order to keep you out of court to also communicate with the other party as to what you think would be reasonable moving forward that you know, you're gonna just be paying 20% of whatever funds will come in. No point in going to court and hopefully you guys can get that in writing um, and agree that that would become a court order um, while this coronavirus and your lack of employment or lack of hours are still in effect. So this is just one situation because there's a bunch of other factors that can actually affect this and that would not make it be reasonable for you to be paying 20% and perhaps it would be reasonable for you to be paying significantly less or maybe you should be paying more because you're not affected by the coronavirus and you're still employed, still making the same amount of money and the other person was making you know, 60 grand a year and you know, $5,000 a month and, and now they're only barely making $1,000 a month. Then more likely than not, if they ever took you to court, you're probably gonna be paying more in spousal support because of that. 
Um, but other factors go into that as too, because you know the court's not gonna make you pay more than the marital standard of living as well. So there's a lot of factors that go into it. This is just very simple. I wanted to provide just one solution to people that are just stressing about their spouse support orders. They don't know what to do because the courts are closed. The other party's asking them for money and there is just no way around it uh, now. So if you can please go ahead and share this video with your friends, your family, your colleagues, anybody that you think would benefit from this video, even if you don't think that they're gonna benefit from this video, but maybe somebody within their circle might benefit from this video. And I just think that with tensions just being so high and um, you know, parties are just, everybody's really stressed out in this, in today, right? Like we're all stressed out about what's, what's to come next. Um, and you know, without income coming in, and yet you have court orders that you must abide by, and it's like, what do you do? And that's stressful. It's stressful when you don't have a solution. And I'm all about providing solutions of some sort. And so I hope that this guidance will help somebody out there. Um, I would just, again, appreciate it if you guys can just share this video um, so that parents and spouses can have an open line of communication about what to do uh, in this in this time and take the matters into their own hands and hopefully avoid court. So if you found this uh, video helpful, please share it. If you didn't find it helpful, please let me know why. <laughs> and if there's any other content that you'd like to see from me, I'd be more than happy to discuss that with you. All right, warriors, I hope that you continue being safe and well, and again, do what is in the best interest of your family. Take care.